near total ban in his state and what it means for his party's post row strategy. You're watching Meet the Press now. Stay with us. Welcome back. A group of South Carolina Republican lawmakers barred a near total abortion ban from passing the state Senate last Thursday, taking a stand against other members of their own party. Even without the group, Republicans in the state Senate still had the votes needed to pass the ban, but they did not have the support necessary to vote down a filibuster threatened by Republican state Senator Tom Davis. Davis said the bail bill failed to balance women's bodily autonomy and the rights of the fetus and promised his daughters he would take that action. Listen to what he said. I have a 28-year-old daughter, a 22-year-old daughter, and a 17-year-old daughter. And they'd say to me with one voice, Dad, you aren't going to let this happen, are you? You're not going to let this happen. You guys aren't going to, up in Columbia, tell us that from the moment that we become pregnant, we lose all control over what happens inside our body. You're not really going to do that, are you, Dad? And my response to them is, I'm not. Divisions on the issue of abortion have become pronounced within the Republican Party in recent weeks. Some Republicans feel the hardline restrictive stance the party has taken is out of touch with voters' reactions to this summer Supreme Court ruling, softening their message before the midterms. I am joined now by Republican State Senator from South Carolina, Tom Davis. State Senator Davis, thanks so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. I know you're busy. You're in your car right now heading from one place to the next, so I appreciate your stopping to talk to us. Happy to be with you. Let's pick up on that impassioned speech that you delivered, if we can. You said you promised your daughters you would not vote for that near total ban. Can you walk me through what the decision making process was like for you? I mean, absolutely. I mean, when you think about the bill that was before us, it would have banned abortions from the time of conception. Um, so essentially, what you're saying is, you know, once a sperm fertilizes an egg, a woman loses all autonomy over her body um, altogether. Um, I just do not believe that is a reasonable balancing of the rights that are involved here. And, and there are more than just one right involved. It's not just the right of the unborn child to be born. There's also the right of the woman to autonomy over her body. So you have two rights, each deserving of respect. Um, they obviously conflict with each other. And so what I think our job is as a legislature was to balance those competing rights, to, to look at that right of a woman to autonomy of her body and balance it against the right of the unborn child to be born. And, and for me, um, I think there ought to be deference paid to the woman at the beginning of the pregnancy. And then as you move along to term throughout the nine months, I mean, gradually, I think the, that right yields to the right of the unborn child to be born. But I just cannot subscribe to this notion that once the sperm fertilizes an egg, that a woman loses all control over her body. I don't mm. think that's a reasonable balancing of the respective rights. Well, you were joined by four other Republican lawmakers. Three of them were women who voted against this ban. But as you have said, I mean, there is a divide within your party. There was a divide within your own state legislature. How consequential do you think this divide is? Well, I think we're going through some soul searching right now in the Republican Party. It's the first time we've had this debate um, in regard to a woman's right to an abortion and the right of, a, of an unborn child to come to term and be born in the post-Roe world. I mean, the debates we've had in the past were more or less academic debates because irrespective of what we passed, if it was violative of the Supreme Court's ruling in Roe v. Wade as modified by the Casey decision, it was going to be enjoined by the federal court. And, and so, in essence, it was an academic exercise. But last June, when the United States Supreme Court reversed Roe, when it reversed Casey, and it said this is a matter for the legislature to decide, I think you have a lot of people looking at this with new eyes, looking at this with a degree of criticalness that, that they haven't in the past. Mm. And so right now I think we're sorting through this issue. Well, uh, it, it's notable to hear you frame it in that context. And I guess politically we have seen – the impact already in some places in Kansas, for example, when abortion was quite literally on the ballot in that special election in New York as well. State Senator Davis, do you think the issue of abortion could cost Republicans the chance to win back the House or the Senate? Well, it certainly has made the issue more salient and more relevant. I mean, right, right now we're dealing um, in an environment that, quite frankly, most people considered 
the issue of abortion be settled by Roe v. Wade. We've had 49 years worth of federal jurisprudence uh, establishing a woman's right to an abortion. And, but just so to put a, a fine people, point on it, State Senator, just to put a fine point on it, do you think it's going to hurt Republicans in the midterms? I don't know if it will hurt them, but I think it brings the issue to bear. I think voters are going to be wanting to hear answers, and I think individuals better be prepared to make arguments. Do you think, though, given what, what – I guess the way to frame it is what – do you think the impact is when you see the turnout and the results in a Kansas or in that New York special election? And what is your message to fellow Republicans who are running in these really close races? I will say this, that if you're going to support a ban on abortion from the moment of conception, if you're going to take away all autonomy to a, of a woman to write over her body when a sperm fertilizes the egg, there's going to be political consequences if you take that extreme position. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any question about that. And, you know, it's notable because as you were walking through how you came to this conclusion, you talked about the fact that as the pregnancy goes on, it is your belief that ultimately you then have to take the rights of the fetus into greater consideration. And I wonder where you think that line stands right now. Obviously, it's a bit murky in your state. What will happen in the long term? Right now, I believe the law, uh, the current law stops abortion access at 20 weeks, but there is an effort underway to stop it at six weeks to impose a six week trigger ban. Where do you stand? Would you support that six week ban? Yeah, right now, I have voted for a bill that has a ban when a fetal heartbeat can be detected, which is typically at about six months. Uh, with exceptions for rape and incest, uh, for the life health of the mother, and in cases where a physician has diagnosed the baby with a, fe a fatal fetal anomaly. So that, that's the status of the law right now in South Carolina. Um, quite frankly, I think people who are at the extremes on either perspective are going to lose out. On the right, that means you can't take away a woman's right to autonomy when the sperm fertilizes the egg. But on the left, by the same token, you can't say that a woman's right to autonomy over her body extends through that entire nine-month term. I think that is equally a position that people reject. So I, I think the, you know, the decision, I think most people, most South Carolinians mm -hmm. are somewhere, somewhere in the middle. Uh, it's such a fascinating perspective, and we really appreciate your joining us. South Carolina State Senator Tom Davis, thank you so much.